Anybody here love him? Amen. Anybody here, yeah. here appreciate him? And you just, when you just think on his goodness and his mercies, his loving kindness, you just appreciate the God that he is. When I think about all the things that I've been through, and all the things that God kept me through, I can't help but to say thank you. And you know, I realize that I'm not even worthy. Amen. Anybody in here realize we're not even worthy? His goodness is not because we're so good, it's because he's so good. And I just love him today, and I feel a special presence today. I feel like God just wants to touch somebody in a real special way. Maybe somebody's been praying for something special from God. God is able to provide exactly what you need from Him. Hallelujah. He said He will give you the things that you ask Him for. And I believe Him for that today. And I want you to know, each and every one of you, that every single day I'm praying for you. I'm not just saying that I'm praying for you every day. That God will bless your lives, that He'll bless your families, uh, that He would attend to the things that you put in His hands. Some things we don't want God to mess with. But the things that you give God, God will take care of it for you. Amen. And so we bless Him today. Amen. And there is a word that the Lord would have me to minister to you today. Amen. And I believe, amen. If you just give me a few moments today. Continue, continue, Brother Trent. Amen. I want you to uh, just give God all of your attention today as we minister to you. Amen. I'm going to ask uh, if you'd be patient with me. I'm going to look at a few passages that I want to read from uh, that will be important to the message that God has given us today. I do not expect to be long. As you all know, I'm not really a long-winded preacher. Not because I cannot be, it's, it's because, you know, I take into account your time and we don't want to uh, keep you longer than necessary, longer than the Spirit of God would have us to. So I want to begin uh, today in John, the 15th chapter, John 15, and I want to read a few verses here and we'll let you know what those verses are in a moment, uh, but I also want you to... Uh, put your finger on 2 Corinthians 4. I'm going to look at verses 8 and 9 and 17 in that passage. And then I'm going to go back to Psalms 1 and verse 3. So I told you to be a little patient with me today. But I think all of these scriptures are necessary that we would hear that which God wants us to on today. So beginning in John the 15th chapter verses 1 and 2 and then verses 5 through 8. I want to read for a moment. Hopefully you have your Bibles. In John 15 verses 1 and 2 it says Jesus is speaking and he says I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth fruit that beareth not fruit he taketh away and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verses 8 and 9. Thank you, Brother Trent. 2 Corinthians 4 verses 8 and 9. And 17, we want to read. Here's what it says. Verse 8 says, We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Verse number 17 says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. I want to read verse 17 again. He said, it says, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, 
worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Finally, I want you to turn your attention to Psalms 1 and verse number 3. And here is what the scripture says. It says, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Once more, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. And I want to use for a topic today, your next season is on the way. Come on, if you believe that and you receive that, I want you to say with me, my next season is on the way. If you bow your heads, let us pray. Precious Father, we thank you and we give you praise for this day that you've blessed us to see. We thank you for every person under the sound of my voice. I thank you, God, that you would allow us, God, to hear what the Spirit is saying to us, speak to us in such a way, God, that we will know how to apply it to our lives. We will give you praise today. Give us clarity. Give us understanding. In the precious and mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. You can be seated in his presence. Thank you so much uh, for your patience. Your next season is on the way. Through this message that God has given me to minister today, bless you, my brothers. Through this message that God has given me to minister to you today, I want to communicate some things that the devil does not want any believer to understand. He doesn't want us to understand some of these things that I want to share with you today, so I want you to pay real close attention and I want to begin by focusing your attention on the foundational text for today of John the 15th chapter where Jesus is teaching his disciples about the importance of our connection to him. He wants the disciples to understand their connection. He wants us to understand our connection. So Jesus takes his time and he teaches his disciples. So I want you to look firstly at what Jesus says to the disciples in verse number 5 of this 15th chapter of John. He says to them that I am the vine. But then he says ye are the branches. And not only does Jesus reveal here in this verse that he is the vine but in verse 1 of the same chapter, Jesus says to them in this verse, he says, I am the true vine. Now what Jesus is essentially conveying when he says that I am the true vine is that he is the source of all life. And that no life can exist without him. None can exist without him. And John 1, verses 1 through 3, confirms that Jesus is indeed the source of all life. For this text of Scripture says that in the beginning was the Word, who is Jesus. Then it goes on to say that the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It says the same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So, he is indeed the source of all life. And then Jesus continues in John, looking back at John 15, and he says that my father is the husbandman. Now Jesus says, he says, now look at verse 1, John 15 and 1. He says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Now it's important for us to understand that when Jesus says that his father is the husbandman, he is conveying to us that his father is the vine dresser. His father is the gardener. 
of our lives. I want you to hear this. Because in this role as husbandman, God is the one who tends to the branches. God is the one who cultivates the branches. I was just talking to Sister Nakia before service. She was talking about her grass. She loves pretty grass and she's trying to cultivate it. Where well, it's you and I that God cultivates. Anybody glad that it's God that cultivates us? And he says, I am the true vine. We are connected to God. Now, in verse 2, I want you to understand now that Jesus describes two types of branches. And these branches, God deals with. Again, now, he says that we are the branches and he's the vine. Now, the first branch that he deals with in verse number 2 of John 15, I may be skipping around a moment here as we go through this message because I want you to get what the Lord is trying to convey to us today. But again, Jesus talks about two types of branches in verse number 2 of John 15. The first branch that Jesus talks about is one that does not bear fruit. Okay, that's the first branch he talks about. And then the next branch that he talks about is one that beareth fruit. And then I want you to notice what Jesus says in verse 2 about these branches. He says that every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Very clearly Jesus says, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. This means that he releases it if it doesn't bear fruit. It means that he separates himself from it if it doesn't bear fruit. And thus, it is no longer a part of the vine. Remember, he was talking to his disciples about his connection with us and, and with him. He wants us to understand his connection, so he lets them know that if you don't bear fruit, Jesus says, he taketh away. And then he says, every branch in me that beareth fruit. Again, he speaks of two different branches. One that bears fruit, one that does not bear fruit. So he says of the one that beareth fruit, he says, every branch in me that beareth fruit, he purgeth it that it may bring forth more fruit. So Jesus says that the branches that don't bear fruit, I separate myself from, but the ones that bears fruit, Jesus says, I purge them that it may bring forth more fruit. You see, Jesus likes fruit. Now, what does purge mean? Purge means to prune. What does prune mean? Prune means to cut. It means to cut off. It means to remove dead or non-living things, excuse me, or living things to increase fruit. That's what prune means. So now I need you to understand some things about pruning in order for us to get this important revelation that Jesus is conveying to the disciples as well as us. Because the word was written that we might receive it. It was written for us. So I want you to understand some important things about pruning that we might get this revelation. And here are some things to keep in mind when it comes to pruning as it is spoken of in this particular chapter of John 15. Firstly, excuse me, for the believer, pruning is painful but profitable. I want you to say that with me because I need you to get this. Say with me that pruning is painful but it's profitable. Remember now, pruning means to cut. 
And when Jesus says, I purge you, and when, I, when he says that I prune you, Jesus is saying, I cut you. Oh my God. And, but I cut you for a good reason. I cut you because you've been bearing fruit. I cut you because you are a living thing. You're not, you're not out there not producing fruit. But when I see that you're producing fruit, Jesus says, I purge you because I want you to bring forth more fruit. You see, you got to understand sometimes in our lives that sometimes pain means gain. And sometimes when we're cut in life, sometimes when things happen to us, it's not that because we are bad people, but sometimes God cuts on us. Sometimes God allows us to go through things because God is trying to produce more fruit in our lives. Somebody say he's just purging me. Uh-huh. And so don't feel like God is mad with you because sometimes God allows certain things in your life. He, he allows you to experience certain things when he sees fruit in you uh, because God recognizes your potential. God knows that He what he wants to bring about in your life. So when God sees the potential for you to produce more fruit, God says, I want to purge them. Again, I need you to understand pruning is painful, but it is profitable. We'll get into that a little more as we continue. So in other words, it's important for us to understand that in the context in which Jesus speaks about pruning, or in other words, cutting, that it is a good thing for us to be pruned. It's a good thing for us to be purged by God. It's a good thing for God to cut on us. Secondly, I want you to understand that when God cuts or prunes us, his intention is that every cut will be for his glory. Oh my God. And so when God cuts on you, when God purges you, when God prunes you, God says, I'm cutting on them. Amen. I, I am purging them because in a particular season that I'm going to bring forth in their life, they're going to be better. Uh, I, I, there is a season uh, where I'm going to bring them forth. I'm going to get some glory out of their lives. And so we must understand that sometimes the way God cuts on us is through the trials and through the tri tribulations that he allows in our lives. Is anybody with me? Amen. The way he does it is God allows things in our lives. Uh, he allows tribulations in our lives because God is purging us. It's important for us also to understand that when we go through things, you see, when we experience things in our lives, it's a travesty when we don't learn from what God allows us to go through. You see, God wants us to learn from our trials. He wants us to learn from the things that he allows. Because God is purging us. This is why the Bible says in 2 Timothy, the third chapter, verse 12, that yea, and all that will live godly will suffer persecution. Now, the scripture does not say that we might suffer persecution. But the scripture says all that live godly shall suffer persecution. So don't, don't think you've been picked out to be picked on when you go through persecution. Listen, when people, when people come against you sometimes, it's only, amen, sometimes because you are a child of God, things are going to happen in your life. But that's not the time for you to cry. It's not the time for you to turn around and go back on God. It's not the time for you to backslide. But you need to understand that some. God purges me because God understands my potential. God will let me go through some things. God will let me deal with some experiences in my life because God sees over the horizon what he has prepared in our life. Can I get an amen right there? Anybody 
know that God has something prepared for you. If you believe that, I need you to lift your hands and tell him, thank you right there, that God has some things for your life. But God's got to purge you sometimes. Sometimes God has got to let you go through some things. And how many of you know we don't like any pain? But I got you, I have got to have you to understand today that sometimes the pain in your life is profitable. Sometimes it is God that is inflicting the pain. Sometimes we blame everything on the devil, you know. Everything that goes wrong in our life, we blame it on the devil. Amen. But watch this. You know the story of Job. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time there. But when the pain came in Job's life, it was not because God had left him. Come on, somebody. God knew what was going on in Job's life just like he knows about your pain. Somebody say with me right now that God knows about my pain. Come on. I need you to let the devil understand that because what he's trying to get you to do uh, when pain comes about in your life, he wants you to leave God. Uh -huh. He wants you to think that God is not faithful. But God is faithful. Come on, somebody. He is faithful. God said, I'll never leave you alone. Is there anybody that trusts in the fact that God will not leave you alone? If there's anybody that trusts in the fact that God is the one taking care of you, and that God is able to work out every problem in your life regardless of how hard it looks. It doesn't look hard sometimes. Uh -huh. But God is able to fix it. Uh -huh. God is a fixer. God is a quicker picker up. Come on, somebody. God is a God that will see about you. And he'll see about me. If you believe it, shout glory in here. If you believe it, give it praise. If you believe it, tell it praise you. God is a God who will see about me. Uh -huh. Listen, but there is no need to fret. Uh -huh. Because according to 2 Corinthians 4, verse 17, the afflictions that God allows in our lives work for us. Uh -huh. Come on, I need you to turn back over there for a moment because I need you to see it for yourself. Uh, some of the afflictions that God allows in your life work for you. Why do they work for you? Because God is purging you. Say with me, God is purging me. Uh -huh. He's purging me. So watch this. I need you to see this with your own eyes. But some of the afflictions that God allows work for you. Watch what the Bible says here in 2 Corinthians 4, 17. <clears throat> Excuse me. It says, for our affliction, excuse me, our light affliction, which is, watch this, but for a moment. <laughs> Come on, somebody. How many times does it feel like in our life when we have just a, a small little hiccup in our life, we act like it's forever? We act like we've been dealing with it for years. But the scripture says here that our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Now, here are the words that I was trying to get you to see. The next few words says, work it for us. If you have an underliner, a highlighter, or anything like that in your hand, I want you to understand. I want you to underscore the words, work for us. And then I'm going to read it again. It says, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, work it for us. I want you to read. I want you to read that scripture with that frame of mind when you read it. Now watch this. Now what does it work? The Bible says here that it works a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. So your afflictions that God allows in your life, they are working for you. Uh, but they work when God allows it. Uh huh. When God has ordained your pain, they work for you, and God doesn't submit you to the pain to leave you there. That's why I can tell you today that whatever you're in that's hurting you, you're coming out. Why? Because God told me to tell the church today that you got a next season. 
Come on, somebody. Shout with me. I got another season on the way. Uh huh. God told me to tell somebody in here today that you have another season. Yeah, you might weep and may endure for a night, but joy is going to come in the morning. Somebody shout, my weeping days are about to be over because God said, I have another season. God said, my season is on the way. I come to declare it today. I come to decree it today that God has another season. So I need you to understand that the afflictions in your life, they are not for naught. Uh -huh. The things that you go through, there is a reason that you go through. And God is your purger. God is the pruner. I'll get into that a little bit more later. But, you know, uh, the God, remember now, Jesus says, I am the vine. And that my father is the husband man. And when he talks about his father being the husband man, he's talking about the fact that his, his, his father is the gardener. Uh -huh. He's the vine dresser. So it is the gardener that prepares you for your next season. Oh my God. He cuts you. You see, you see, when, when there's some things, oh, let me get back over here. Oh my God. Amen. But, but when, when God cuts on you, it's because he knows there is another season. So he cuts you because he saw some fruit. And there's going to be some fruit that God want more fruit, the Bible says, because he says, I purge you that you might bring forth more fruit. Everybody say more fruit. More fruit. And so God cuts on you. He, 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 he purges you because he knows uh, that you have a season. You have another season. Amen. So you, know, you must understand, amen, that what you go through, the trouble that you deal with, the problems that you encounter, uh, they're not going to last always. It's, it's only but for a moment. Somebody says just for a moment. Uh -huh. In other words, it's not going to last long, especially when compared excuse me, uh, with the far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory that the scripture talks about. In other words, it came to pass. When you talk about pastor, I'm talking about the pain that God has allowed in your life. It came to pass. Uh, God allowed the pain because your pain had a mission. God allowed the pain because God knew your pain would help them to accomplish something in your life. And it's all right to cry sometimes, but don't forget to rejoice. Don't forget to praise him over your next season. Say with me again, I have another season. Uh -huh. Watch this now. Understand that your trouble is not going to last always. This is why Paul says in Romans 5 and 3, Paul says this, Paul says, watch this now, because remember I told you it's all right to cry sometimes, but don't forget to rejoice. Because Paul says in Romans 5 and 3, he says that we glory in tribulation. That's what Paul said. He said, we glory in tribulation. Now, the next thing I need you to understand is not only does God cut on you for the glory that shall be revealed in you. But when God cuts on you, God cuts on you. He purges you to make you better. Come on, somebody. He, he, pur he purges you to make you better. This is why David says, it was good for me that I was afflicted. You see, David got the revelation that though he was afflicted, that his afflictions was good for him. Why? Because 2 Corinthians 4 and 17 lets us know that our afflictions are but for a moment and they work for us. Let me move on. Next, when God cuts us, he cuts us because he knows, as I've said to you before, that another season is coming in our lives. Amen. God cuts on you. He purges you. After he sees the type of fruit that he wants in, this, in, in your life. Because he knows there is another season. Anyone who is a gardener understands this. Because the only reason that any gardener prunes its plants 
is because the gardener believes or the gardener knows that his plants have another season. Uh -huh. In other words, every gardener that cuts his plants cuts the plants for the next season. This is the reason that God purges you. This is the reason he says, mm, excuse me, when I, when I see you producing fruit, I purge you. But the one who produces no fruit, no fruit. He, he, he says, I, I separate myself. Amen. Uh, the connection is not the same when you are not a fruit bearer. Now this is why Jesus says in John 15 and 2, he says that every branch in me that beareth fruit, watch again, he says he purges or proves it so that it may bring forth more fruit. So the reason that God cuts on you, I want you to get this in your spirit, is because you have another season on the way. Are y'all with me? The reason that you deal with some of the pain in your life is because you have another season on the way. The reason that it hurts sometimes is because you have another season on the way. But what you got to do is you can't die in the midst of the pain. Did you hear what I said? You can't die in the midst of what's going on. You can't let the pain kill you. Watch this. Because you know sometimes even when we go to the, our natural doctor, sometimes we have to be operated on at the natural doctor. Sometimes the doctor has to cut on us, but the reason the doctor cuts on us is because the doctor is trying to make us better. And sometimes when the doctor cuts, how many know it hurts? Every time I go to the doctor and they get ready to give me a shot, I say, you ain't going to hurt me, y'all. I make sure, don't hurt me if you can help it. <laughs> Amen. That's what I tell them when they get ready to give me a shot. Don't hurt me if you can help it. But the shot is to make me better. So the reason that the doctors cut on you is because they have a vision of you getting better. The reason that your natural doctor cuts on you is that they have a vision of you getting up out of that bed and walking out better. Somebody say it's going to be better. Oh, come on, talk to me like you know what you're talking about. Say it's going to be better. God is going to cut you to the point that you get better than what you are in your current state. Now remember now again that Jesus said uh, that his father is the husbandman, as I've said to you, which means that he is the gardener in our lives and he is the one that prepares us for our next season. He cuts on us because he is expecting us to bring forth some fruit in our next season. Therefore, you should understand that the fact that you have been cut on proves that you have another season on the way. The fact that God has purged your life is because you have another season on the way. You see, Psalms 1 and 3 proves this because the psalmist said in Psalms 1 and 3, he says, watch this, he says, and you shall be like a tree. Watch what the psalmist says now. He says, and you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Watch this. That bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Do you see that in your Bible? Let me read it again. He says, and you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. The words cannot get any plainer than that. The psalmist lets you know that you have a season. Which means that the season that you're in right now is coming to an end. Come on, somebody. You have another season. The season you're in right now is not going to last always. The, the, the season of pain that you're dealing with now is not going to last always uh, because you're going to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth your fruit in your season. In other words, what you've been through is going to pass. <laughs> Come on, somebody say with me, it's going to pass. Uh -huh. It's going to pass. In other words, it's got to pass because your season is on the way. Amen. 
And I love the other information that the psalmist provides about your season in the rest of Psalms 1 and 3. And here's what the psalmist says in the rest of verse 3. He says that during your season that is on the way, your leaf shall not wither. That's what he says. He says, your, your, and I'm paraphrasing here, but he says, your leaf shall not wither. What does wither mean? Wither means uh, to weaken or lose strength. Wither means to lose vigor or that vitality. And the psalmist says, your leaf shall not wither. Um, which means uh, that which you produce in your life will not weaken. It will not lose its vitality. And then he says in the last phrase of verse 3, that in your season that's on the way, whatsoever you do with shall prosper. I want you to underline that in your Bibles if you have a pen or a highlighter. Psalms 1 and 3. Whatsoever you do it shall prosper. So I know it may look like things are not working now. But wait till your season gets here. <laughs> I know it sometimes uh, seems chaotic in your life. But just wait till your season gets here. I know it seems like that God sometimes is far away from what is happening in your life. But wait till your season gets here. God is only preparing you for your next season. And so what am I saying to you? I'm saying that if you can last through the pruning, and if you can last through the cutting that God allows in your life, it is going to usher you right into your next season. Because your season is on the way. In other words, if you can last through your throughs, if you can get through what you're dealing with, amen, if you can deal with that pain and understand the perspective of your pain, uh, that, that, that is painful, it's pain, painful, but it's profitable. If you can get through it, you can make it to your next season. Oh my God. And I come to tell somebody today that it looks different in your next season. Uh huh. Uh, it's going to be different in your next season than it is right now. Uh huh. You're going to be, the Bible says, the psalmist says in, in verse 3 of Psalms 1, that whatsoever you do shall prosper. Now, let me stop right there and just say this to you. He did say whatsoever you do shall prosper, which means you've got to do something. <laughs> you can't just sit back talking about what God going to do and you don't do nothing. He says that whatsoever you do shall prosper. So if we give God something to work with, God will work with it. If we give God something to bless, he'll bless it. Are you with me today? To understand the way that God cuts on us is by subjecting us to situations that try our faith. This is why it hurts at times because God is trying to cut you. <laughs> God is trying to prune you. God is trying to make you better. But remember that your pain is only for a temporary season. Because we already read in 2 Corinthians 4 and 17 that it's but for a moment those afflictions, but they work for us. This is why 1 Peter 6 and 7, 1 Peter 1 verses 6 and 7 tells us that uh, tell us what to do during this temporary season. For it says to us that wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, that's in your Bible in 1 Peter 1. It says, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Watch this. Verse 7 says that the trial of your faith being much more precious than a gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. So even first Peter lets us know that there is a reason for the pain. There's a reason for the tribulation that sometimes uh, we have to experience in our life. So these verses let us know that the pain, again, is only for a season and that it's there to usher us into our next season. This is why the scripture tells us to 
greatly rejoice even in the midst of pain. Anybody ever tried praising God in the midst of pain? Oh, uh, it, it takes some focus and uh, some intention to do that. Uh, when well, you know it hurts, but you'll still lift your hands and say thank you. Now, let me give you another picture here. Uh, we'll find our exit here in a moment. But I'm going to give you another picture here uh, that will help you to understand the things that I'm trying to get you to see. And uh, uh, us men uh, cannot relate to it like these women can. Uh, but when you think about a, a woman in her ninth month and her baby is about to come forth, every now and then uh, uh, she has some pain. Come on, somebody. I believe some of these women know what I'm talking about. Uh, in that ninth month, there's some pain that she has to deal with, but there's some fruit on the way. Oh, my God. She, she's got to deal with some pain, uh, but the reason she's got to deal with some pain is because her baby is on the way. And watch this now. Sometimes that pain uh, that, that a woman has to experience during pregnancy, and women, you help me out if, I, if I'm not telling it right, because I ain't never had no baby. Amen. But understand, amen, that when the pain gets at its worst, you are almost at the door of your breakthrough. Can I get an amen from the women that just had some babies out there? Uh -huh. when, when, when the pain gets most intense, it is at that moment that, that you're about to have your breakthrough. And the devil wants you to quit before you have your breakthrough. But somebody said, I can't quit now because my baby on the way. Come on, talk to me, y'all. My baby is on the way. I can't quit. The pain is intense. But my baby is almost here. Come on, somebody ought to shout glory right there. This is one of the reasons that Paul said in Romans 8, 18, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Uh-huh. I come to let you know today uh, that after all the suffering that you've been through in your life, that, that there's going to be some glory after this. Come on, say with me, there is some glory coming after this. I need you to say it like you mean it. I need you to say it uh, uh, to the point that the devil gets mad and he gets concerned. Say, there's some glory after this. Uh -huh. I'm going through some pain, but there's some glory after this. You see, I want to teach you how to preach to yourself. You don't have to wait to the church house to hear a message but you can preach to yourself when the pain shows up I want you to tell that devil that there's some glory after this so I'm going to get through my pain I'm not going to quit somebody say I'm in my ninth month <laughs> somebody say push oh y'all ain't talking to me somebody say push I'm in my ninth month somebody say push my baby is on the way. Somebody say, push. God ain't through with me yet. How many of you know your baby is on the way? I need you to stand up in this church house. I found me a good exit right here. I need you to stand up and lift your hands in here. If you know that your pain ain't going to last always. If you know that your pain is only temporary. If you know that it's only but for a moment. Come on, somebody. That it works for you. Somebody shout. It works for me. Y'all ain't talking to me. Say it works for me. My pain works for me. My new season is on the way. Brother Trent, I need you to come here. Come here. I'm about to finish, but I, I, I need you to come here. I need you to grab that flower for me right there. And I need you to sit it right there in front of me. Because I need you to see this. I, I need you. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about that. No, no. The whole thing, man. Bring me the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want no little bud. Bring me, <laughs> bring me the whole city right there. Uh huh. See, I need you to understand now uh, that God is your gardener. Somebody say, God's my gardener. God is uh -huh. my gardener. And God says, if you, if you, if I see you producing fruit, uh, then I'm gonna purge you. And, and y'all been listening now. What does purge mean? It means to what? Prune. Uh huh. Prune means to what? Cut. And what God does it, is cuts on things that are lively. Mercy. God cuts on living things because what God understands is that there's another season. Say with me one more time, I have another season. 
So since God is your God, God begins to prune you because there is a vision that God sees of you. And even though you go through the pain, God says, uh-huh, I'm going to cut him right there. And I'm going to cut him right there because he has another season on the way. Amen. And if you just allow God to cut like he wants to cut. Before you know it, you're going to be walking into your new season. And Psalms 1-3 lets us know that whatsoever you do shall prosper. Shall glory in here. Whatever I do in my new season is going to prosper. My God, I can preach about three more hours, but I got to stop here. Y'all won't stay here if I preach that long. But I need you to understand you got another season. Amen. Hallelujah. I need you to understand you, 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 you got another season. Yeah. Is anybody listening to me? Amen. Listen, it's, it's, time, it's time out for, for crying. Amen. It's time now to rejoice. Amen. You got to understand, amen, uh, uh, that, that when you praise God, what you are doing when you praise God is that you are prophesying to your situation. Is anybody listening to me? Uh, when, I'm, talking about, I'm talking about when you're in the midst of your pain and you decide that you're going to praise God instead of Christ. Amen. You see, when you praise God, I want you to understand you're prophesying to your situation that it's going to get better. Amen. You praise God because you understand that I have another season. You see, you see, before, this, this is, these are not real flowers, but if they were real, before the flowers are blossomed, it began as a seed. That's right. It was a small thing, but because it had some seasons, it had a, it had a future before it that it would turn out looking beautiful like this. Yes, yes. Somebody say, there's a beautiful season before me. There's a beautiful yes. season before me. Yes. Amen. There's a beautiful season before me. I'm going to pray for you. I hope did anybody understand anything I was saying. Did I, did, did I just preach to myself or did somebody else? Awesome word, Pastor. Because I showed up preaching to myself. Yeah, I preached to myself. I, I, I preached to myself that my next season on the way. Amen. Oh, I preached to myself that it ain't going to be this way always. Oh, I let myself know today there's some good days ahead of me. And I'm going to prophesy to myself with my praise unto God. I want you to bow your heads. I want to pray for you. I don't know how long I've been preaching today. I lost track of time. But I feel like I need to stop about here. But I just trust you receive that which God has given me to share. Bow your heads. Let me pray for you today. Brother John, before I pray, can you get these flowers? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to pray. I want, you to, I want to let you know today it's going to be all right, whatever you're experiencing in your life. Bow your heads with me, precious Father. I come to you in the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus. God, I tried my best to deliver what you put in my spirit. I pray, God, today for these people whom you love so much that you gave your only begotten son. I thank you, God, that you're the husband man, you're the gardener, you're the vine dresser. You are, you are the one that prunes us and helps to make us better. I pray for them, God, in their individual circumstances, God, that you will look upon these, your people, God, and touch them, Lord, and, and Lord, and work the things out in their lives that they need worked out. God, touch their husbands, and their wives, God, their children, God bless them on their jobs. Lord, let them know that you're there. God bless them in their individual circumstances. Touch their bodies and heal them today in the name of Jesus. And God, we're believing, as the psalmist says, that whatsoever we do in this season, it shall be profitable. We believe you today, God, because we trust you. Your word is good. You've never failed us yet. Your word is good. There's power in your name. God, we believe you today. I'm trusting you, God, to save family members. I'm trusting you, God, to save this community. I 
I send the Holy Spirit on this Pentecost Sunday throughout this community that it would arrest those who are walking in sin haven't released their life to you. I send the Holy Spirit to arrest them now. God, that you would touch them where they are and that men and women would cry out, what must I do to be saved? Because we need you in such a time as this. I thank you, God, that we have the victory because we're your children. And that our eyes haven't seen, our ears haven't heard, neither have it entered into the heart of us what you have in store for us because we have another season on the way. And I give you glory for it now in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, Lord, everyone in the sound of the sound of my voice, I pray for them individually and all of us collectively. And I thank you, God, that you know everything that we need. I don't have to tell you, I don't have to ask them, you already know what we need. Pray that you will give it to them now. In the precious and mighty name of Jesus, God, help us to serve you better. Help us, God, not to miss your will for our lives. Let your will be done in our lives today. In the precious and in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, God, for even how you touched my son on this morning. And allow him to be with us today. That you didn't allow the, an accident to take place in his life. Pray, God, that you would cause him, even in this day, in this hour, Lord, to cry out unto you to be the God of his life in a more and a special way. And we give you praise. We give you glory. God, if there's anything we fail to ask you, you know what we need. Grant it to us because you can read the tables of our heart. I give it to you now in the precious and in the mighty name of Jesus. God, save those who need to be saved. We give you glory for it. Amen. Amen. And amen. Put your hands together. Come on, give God some.